Hey yo, I'm Colby from Sanitarium Productions. We're back again with another G.I. Joe action figure review. In this episode, we're taking a look at the 50th Anniversary 3-pack, the Cobra Legion, featuring the Saw Viper, a new Cobra Bat, and a new Cobra Officer. Standard uh, 50th Anniversary package in here. Flipping it over to the back, we have kind of the standard uh, packaging stuff that is on this particular set. Uh, nothing really special. Some decent character art, but uh, nothing that really stands out as breathtaking, to be honest with you, but it's still nice to have. Uh, let's go ahead and open this thing up, because we want to see the figures. Single piece of tape on the side here. Everything slides out real easy like. Got the uh, figure stands here and the file cards here. So, uh, yeah, there we go. The insert tray lifts out of the rest of the cardboard packaging. And let's go ahead and open up the uh, file cards to begin with. Another single piece of tape here holding them on. Got the Cobra Bat, Saw Viper, and the Cobra Officer. Like with all the rest of the 50th anniversary file cards, you've got two sides for each card with a different language on each side for a total of four languages per character. So, very nice there. The figure stands are also sealed in a little taped baggie. There we go. Saw Viper. Cobra Officer, and the Cobra Bat. Uh, let's go ahead and start on the right-hand side with the Cobra Officer. Got a cool backpack here. I think this is the basically the same pack that came with the, what was it, the Horseman, Elite Horseman or something like that. A nice RPG here with a non-removable missile on it. Standard issue Cobra Assault Rifle. Two of these silver landmines. And then the actual Cobra Officer. We get a female this time, and uh, a little thing just fell off her side here, but uh, we'll stick that back on there till we get to the actual review part. Nice to see another female character here. Removable helmet. Looks pretty good. We'll uh, again zoom in a little close here in a minute and take a more fine look at it. Next up we've got the bat. We've got this nice uh, digital camo in the gray, black, and silver, which is a uh, Pretty cool color scheme, actually. Got the regular bat backpack here with the accessories. And the extra accessory piece there. Uh, don't forget, you do have an extra uh, chest shield here. Pretty easy to overlook since it is a clear piece. Then we've got the Saw Viper, which is uh, honestly the one I'm looking forward to the most here. Straightforward belt of bullets. 
the uh, large caliber, what is that, 50 cal machine gun there. The figure itself in a nice new purple color. Another heavy machine gun there. Got the Saw Viper helmet. And a pistol and a knife here that are taped in. So uh, we're going to slice that tape off there real quick to get to them. The knife and the pistol. Everything else is uh, now done, so we'll trash that. So here's all the cool stuff we get in this set, and uh, this is actually a pretty cool set so far anyways. Not quite as many accessories as some of the rest of them we've seen in the past, but still very cool looking so far. So we'll go ahead and zoom in and uh, take a look at these figures individually. Up first we'll take a look at the Cobra Officer. Again, we do get a nice new female sculpt here. Uh, well, not sculpt, but a new female character, I guess I should say. Um, file card. These frontline fighters lead attack units into battle, but they're but they are officers in name only. The only real rank they have is over their own little squad of troops. They are among the handful of Cobra troopers who have shown some initiative or leadership skills, qualifying them to be in charge of others, however minimally. Ultimately, someone has to keep the ranks together and moving with purpose so that even low-level Cobra forces can achieve their given objective. So, nothing too special about that particular file card, uh, but it is nice to start seeing some female Cobra Troopers coming into play here. I know that uh, the G.I. Joe Club released a three-pack of these females as well, but uh, this was the first retail version we got with the 50th anniversary, so it's nice to see. We have the traditional figure stand here. Uh, Cobra logo on the top. Cobra officer name up front. Other than that, uh, just a standard figure stand. We get the nice little backpack here that has some nice little details. They've kind of highlighted it with the same color blue as reflected in the Cobra officer uniform. You can open this thing up. Two little tabs here on the side of these straps, and you got some storage capacity inside of there. And it just snaps back in place like so. And you have these two little uh, round tabs on the side, which are perfect for housing these little landmine things here. They just kind of snap in place on the side there. So while we're at it, let's look at the actual landmines. Some nice little details on them. They look really cool. Beyond that, there's uh, really not a lot to them, so yeah, they're kind of throwaway kind of doohickeys, but nice that you can just plug them onto the backpack and uh, just kind of forget about them and then throw them down in front of a, a vamp or something so that uh, Cobra can make a quick getaway if uh, Joes aren't paying attention because you know, you'd have to bury those things, I guess, to get them to be not noticeable, but anyways... We get kind of the same RPG here that we've seen with uh, most of the traditional Cobra Troopers as well. Again, minimal details, but still it works well for what it is. The uh, missile on the front is non-removable, but still it, it suffices for what it needs to. It's still a really good RPG. And we have the traditional Cobra Officer uh, Assault Rifle. Very basic assault rifle, some nice details going on. They did paint the stock in the handle to make it look more like a wood attachment similar to an AK-47 but not quite so uh, yeah really nice anyways additional accessories this character comes with is a pistol on her side here it's the standard silencer version of the pistol so we pop the silencer off there it will plug into the actual barrel of the gun like so, and you got a nice little silenced pistol there. 
Again, it fits into the holster really easily, nice and secure and snug, so you don't have to worry too much about losing it. Same thing with the silencer, that's always a little nice little touch there. She also has a knife on her boot. Basic knife here, but it, again, slides in there very easily. Nice and secure, you don't have to worry about it slipping out. On her left side, she has a thing of explosives here that's removable. It's got a little peg hole on the back of the explosives and a little peg on the side of her uh, pouch thing on her leg there. You just kind of line that back up and uh, just pegs back into place and uh, for the most part stays there where it needs to, so that's nice. Uh, the character itself doesn't have a whole lot going on. A uh, little bit of web gear here. Removable helmet, as you can see, it kind of fell off here. <laughs> Snaps back in place pretty easy. Uh, the helmet does look a little oversized on this character, uh, but not too bad. I guess it kind of has to be a little big to fit over top of her head here. Other than that, the actual sculpt itself uh, looks really good. Uh, nice, clean. Some little details on her pants. Not a whole lot on the rest of her outfit here. Nice cobra symbol on her chest. And this little bomb thing keeps uh, sliding around a little bit, so you may have to watch out for that. But all in all, pretty nice here. I'm going to pop the helmet off so you can get a good look at the facial sculpt here. Uh, nothing really crazy or anything going on but uh, you know it works for what it is so definitely not terrible and there's that bomb thing that keeps popping off uh, articulation wise the head does spin 360 degrees the ponytail does not get in the way so you can uh, kind of move it around however you need to to get things to work right standard ball and swivel at the shoulder joint Standard ball and swivel at the elbow joint, and uh, just a regular swivel at the wrist joint. Chest articulation is the standard uh, whatever this thing is. Uh, so you got side to side motion and uh, the ab rocker feature, which is uh, works really well in this case. Standard T hook at the waist, so no limit in articulation pretty much at all there. Double knee joint. And the uh, standard rocker swivel thing down the uh, ankle. So all in all, really good articulation here. Um, it's kind of a basic figure, pretty plain, but it does work. I mean, it is supposed to be just a kind of Cobra officer. Nothing really special about the Cobra troopers in that regard. So um, yeah, no real big complaints here. Helmet fits on pretty well. It does have a tendency to pop off every once in a while. And, uh, unfortunately, this little bomb thing does keep popping off, but, uh, if that's the worst thing that's going to happen, then that's, a uh, pretty good then. The, uh, assault rifle fits into her hand pretty easily. And then the other hand is free for this, uh, RPG thing here, so... It works pretty well. Then the backpack just pegs into her back. You'll have to slide the ponytail around a little bit and line up the hole on her web gear and the hole in her actual back and then just uh, plug that in there and then you're good to go. Again, the bomb fell off again here. We may end up throwing that into the backpack, but... Uh, I can hold on to this stupid helmet. There we go. So all in all, not a bad figure at all. Again, it's uh, supposed to be a plain Jane, no pun intended there, uh, trooper. So it definitely works really well for that. So yeah, no big complaints. And again, it is nice to have another female Cobra figure, so pretty cool.
Up next, we have the Cobra Battle Android Trooper, the Bat. Taking a look at the file card here. These mechanized troopers are built in mass to create an endless supply of fire and forget soldiers. Combat machines that keep fighting until the enemy reduces them to scrap metal. They go in first to wear down G.I. Joe forces, paving the way for a fresh wave of flesh and blood Cobra troopers to try to finish the job. There are a bunch of computerized tin cans with guns, but they can do a lot of damage before being reduced to smoking piles of circuits. So, nothing special about these particular bats. Um, we've seen quite a few of these over the years, and this one doesn't really offer anything new. It is a nice new paint job on it, but that's uh, about all you get. As far as the accessories go, um, it's the same as we've seen on all the rest of these. You've got a couple of different arm attachments here. This one is the uh, flamethrower attachment. And the way these work, uh, you just pop off the forearm of the bat, like so. And you just uh, change these out however you want to, whichever arm you want. And uh, there you go, they're armed for battle. So Pop that back off and put his arm back on there for a minute. And we'll come back to him. The backpack is a nice carrying case here. It has uh, room for two of the attachments, so you've got this uh, kind of laser drill looking thing here and this cool claw thing with an articulated uh, claw mechanism that uh, this one's actually popping out of. It's uh, kind of a flimsy plastic, so you may have to kind of watch that a little bit. It's uh... There we go. Still a nice kind of a gray wash kind of rusted metal thing going on here on all of these accessories so yeah all in all pretty cool the actual backpack itself has a few nice little details here if we can get the light to adjust to pick it up maybe we can't there we go and on the top of them there are two little pegs that fit into these peg holes on the bottom kind of the same way they attach the arms just kind of pop them in place and uh, you're good to go. Like so. The backpack attaches to the back very easily. No big deal there. So you got plenty of storage capacity there. The other accessory we have here is uh, another interchangeable chest plate. So the one that comes stock on it is the uh, battle damage version. And I'll see if I can get my finger in here and just pop this thing out. There we go. There are <clears throat> two little peg holes in the side here. And uh, on the clear one, just one single peg. Just line it up and uh, just press down on it to snap it in place. And it mostly works. <laughs> The uh, Battle Damage version does look a little cooler than the uh, Plain Jane one, but it's nice to see all the circuitry underneath there. The other issue is that uh, this particular bat only comes with one head. Some of the other ones we have have had two heads, one with Battle Damage, one without. This is the clean version without Battle Damage, so just uh, be aware of that. If you're looking for extra heads, uh, this is not the place to get them. The other accessory that comes with this figure is a pistol on the side and a holster. It's got that same nice uh, metallic wash on it as all the rest of his metallic pieces. And it does fit in his holster really easily and snugly, so you don't have to worry about it coming out. The figure itself, again, is uh, pretty straightforward. Same as all the other ones we have. Some nice details in the pants. The chest piece is nice. The arms are those kind of Terminator arm things going on. Overall, really nice looking detail work if you haven't got a bat yet. And uh, the facial sculpt is really awesome on these guys too. As far as articulation goes, the head does span 360 degrees. You'd have a little bit of up and down motion, not a whole lot. But it's an android, so you don't really need a whole lot. Standard uh, ball and swivel at the shoulder joint. Standard ball and swivel at the elbow joints. 
And as far as uh, articulation, it's at the mid forearm, which allows for you to uh, pop those off and interchange them with the other pieces. You've got the standard uh, chest articulation here. So you've got uh, left and right rotation and uh, ab crunch feature. Pretty nice there. Standard uh, T-hook at the waist. You've got this weird little uh, attachment thing for the pistol holster that snaps into his belt there. Uh, in some of the past ones, it tended to pop off, but uh, it looks like they've kind of fixed that on this one, not having that issue whatsoever. Standard uh, double knee joint here, and the uh, swivel and rocker at the ankle joint, so... All in all, very cool looking figure. If you don't already have a whole bunch of bats, then you'll probably be glad to see these things because this is a pretty cool version of it. Some nice little red highlights on it and the grenades on the side. <clears throat> but other than that, it is still just a standard bat. Nothing special about these guys. So <clears throat> that's what we got. One thing I will point out is while it comes with three of these uh, arm accessories. It only has place on the backpack for two of them, but the uh, little trick is it's got a kind of an open area here in the bottom of the pack. The actual hands fit in there really easily so you can carry all of them. And then just snap it on your back there and uh, you're good to go. Uh, not so much you can do with this uh, extra little plate here. You might be able to, and we're going to try it real quick here, to uh, store it inside of here, kind of. Doesn't really work all that well. And then stick your arm in there, and uh, as long as you're pushing it up close against the actual character, you won't lose anything there, but uh, it is real loose at that point, so there is a potential for it to slip out, but still it does allow for the character to carry all of the accessories, so yeah, that's a plus. The last figure in this set is of course the Saw Viper. And this guy is actually the reason I picked up this set. Um, the Saw Viper itself was only available previously as part of the Nocturnal Fire Convention exclusive box set. <clears throat> and uh, it's a character I've always really loved from the comics. Uh, they had a cool version of the figure that came out in the uh, Vintage line. Um, but this is kind of the first time we've actually seen a retail release of the Saw Viper. Looking at the file card here, every Saw Viper is equipped with a gyro-stabilized, cryogenically cooled mini chain gun that has an auto range and optical sighting system complete with infrared night vision capabilities. This means that every trooper has a highly accurate, low malfunction machine gun that won't burn out the barrel during intense rapid fire bursts. Don't get pinned down by these guys. Their weapons have integral, integral sound suppressors. Sorry about that. Effective flash inhibitors and powerful image intensifiers. You won't hear or see them coming. <clears throat> Again, a cool version of the Saw Viper, which has always been an awesome character. We get a traditional figure stand here. Cobra logo, Saw Viper on the top. Nothing excitingly special about it, but uh, it is what it is. We get this cool ammo chain and a really cool 50 cal machine gun. The ammo belt just clips into the side here. Unfortunately, it does not go all the way through on this particular weapon, but uh, it still works for what it is. Pretty nice little uh, solid heavy machine gun here. So yeah, cool, moving on. Uh, we also have this other heavy machine gun here. It's got a little bit more going on to it. It's got a nice uh, 
bipod at the front. It is uh, removable and collapsible, so you can kind of swivel it around wherever you need it to go and just lock it in place there when you're not using it. It also has this cool canister on the side or the bottom that is removable. You can pop that out and uh, exchange ammo cans like that. Uh, it's a really cool looking weapon. Pretty awesome details on it. So very nice. Really suitable for this uh, Saw Viper. Although in the uh, original vintage line, the, the specialty gun that he actually had was much bigger than all of these put together. Um, but I guess they haven't actually made a new version of that yet, so we haven't seen one. We also get a knife here. Pretty straightforward. There is a place on his back here for this to slide in. A nice little sheath there on his back. Pretty nice. Slide that off there. Uh, then we also get a just a regular pistol here. A little small handgun there for him. Which, uh, unfortunately, there is not a place on his person to carry that. So, yeah, that's really the only negative so far about that. <clears throat> we also get a removable helmet here. Styled in the same manner as the original one. You just slide it over top of his head. And there you go. you got the cool Saw Viper thing. Looks really cool. Very nice. Comes off pretty easily. But it's uh, nice and secure, so you aren't going to, shouldn't lose it too terribly much. Uh, on the actual character itself, you also have another holster for his knife on the uh, top shoulder joint there. This one is uh, in there pretty securely. You can see that some of the paint has actually come off of it. But uh, it fits in there really well, and it's not going to come out. You also have a set of binoculars sculpted in there. I think on the uh, original release from the Nocturnal Fire set, they had a radio that clipped on here instead. But they've uh, swapped that out for a set of binoculars. They are non-removable. And on the side, you also have a couple of these uh, tear gas cans or uh, flashbangs or whatever else you want them to be. Again, they are sculpted in and non-removable. Was a nice little touch that they added there. Figure itself has a lot of detail work on it. The uh, flak vest is very intricate. Lots of little pouches in here and there. Different colors going on. So you've got the black and then this kind of gunmetal gray in the center here. The knife itself has some nice silver highlights on the buckles. All the cool little attachment points on the back. The extra sheath for the other knife. Some extra ammo clips for him. The uh, flashbang grenades there. And lots of other pouches here. So all in all, very cool looking. Uh, the face itself is a masked face, which is really the only thing I don't really like about this. Uh, I kind of preferred the original vintage look that didn't have the masked version. But it works for what it is, especially once you stick the helmet on there. You're not really going to notice any issues whatsoever, so... Still looks pretty nice. Articulation wise, whoops, the head comes off completely. Uh, sorry, it does spin 360 degrees and has some up and down motion as well. So if you can keep it from popping off like I did there, uh, you're good to go. Traditional uh, ball and swivel at the shoulder joints. I will mention that this uh, armor plating that he's got on his shoulders uh, does limit his motion a bit if you turn it to a certain spot you can get it to go a little further than normal but uh, yeah you're not going to get a whole lot of uh, range of motion in this guy he is a heavy machine gunner so that shouldn't be that big of an issue standard ball and swivel at the uh, elbow joint as well and he does have just a swivel joint on his wrist we're going to throw his hands up in the air like he just don't care. Chest articulation is side-to-side uh, -side motion is fine. You also have the ab rocker feature, which is not inhibited by this cool flak vest whatsoever. So plenty of range there. Uh, you can just start to see a little bit of silver highlight on his belt buckle here. Probably a carabiner or something there. Standard T-hook at the waist. Double knee joint. And the uh, swivel and uh, rocker 
at the ankle. Sorry. I will point out that uh, just due to the way this uh, <clears throat> foot is sculpted, your front and back on your ankle articulation is a little bit limited, but not too badly. And it just may just need to pull it a little bit. It just may be stiff right there, but uh, it's a little limited, but not too bad. All in all, a really awesome looking figure. Lots of cool articulation here. Um, lots of cool gadgets. So let's go ahead and gear him up. We'll stick his helmet on there. Slide his knife in his back. And let's see what else we can do. <clears throat> we'll go with the uh, large caliber. We'll go underarm on this thing. It's not really supposed to be a handle, but uh, kind of hard to hold it any other way for this guy, unless you're doing two-handed. Uh, then we get the other large assault rifle. Stick in his other hand. <clears throat> and you got a guy that's ready to do some damage here. He unfortunately does not have a place to store his pistol, so uh, you're just going to have to deal with that. But uh, beyond that, it's still an awesome figure. I do like the new purple version of this. The uh, other one was more of a kind of maroon red color. <clears throat> which was more in line with the vintage line. But this one still works really well. Um, I'm kind of partial to purple anyway, so it definitely doesn't bother me whatsoever. So yeah, if you don't already have the Saw Viper from the Nocturnal Fire Convention exclusive set, you will definitely want this particular one. And again, it's the only way to get it at retail, so there you go. It's uh, pretty much a must-have, at least in my book. So, very awesome figure there. Here we have all three of the characters from the Cobra Legion box set. Very awesome set. Uh, you do get the really awesome Saw Viper. You get a pretty, a pretty cool bat and a fairly decent uh, Cobra officer. Uh, new female figure, so some of us will pick it up because of that. Myself, I would recommend it just for the Saw Viper itself because that figure is that awesome. But yeah, I would still probably say this is a highly recommended set. Um, again, you get three really solid released figures here. Uh, no major issues with any of them. They're very much troop builders, and uh, they just work great for that kind of thing. So I don't think you'll be disappointed at all in this set. So yeah, pick it up if you haven't already. That's all the time we've got for today. Thanks for dropping by. Throw some comments down below. Let us know what you think about this particular set. Is there one of these three figures that you think stands out more than the rest of them? Or are they all really awesome? Or do they all suck? Whatever your opinion, drop it below. Let us know what you think. Also, let us know what you'd like to see in future episodes. Subscribe to our channel if you haven't already. Share it with others. Let them come see how awesome we are. Uh, until next time... Yo, Joe.